Thank you for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist, an episodic series that explores the art practice and the personal vision that guides artists. On today's episode, we're very proud to have Natalia Jara, who is completing her thesis in architecture at North Dakota State University. We asked her here today to speak about her research and the completion of artifacts in preparation for her defense. Natalia's work examines our vanishing relationship with nature and the sublime. Through a body of work that confronts viewers with a powerful, painful, and sometimes necessary trauma resulting from natural disaster, this work introduces the thin line we can only understand as a threshold between chaos and order. I'm Anthony Ferris, and this is 10 Minutes with the Artist. Natalia, thank you for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist. So I was curious what the relationship is between uh, nature and trauma. I think it has um, the relationship between humans and nature um, has changed over time. And our, per our perception of nature has changed over time, how we perceive that we can control nature and we can escape it with, you know, we are up um, with our shelters and we can forget about nature. But then um, ancient civilizations were more exposed to it and more attuned to, um, they saw nature as being alive and uh, how the gods were in nature as well. So it was more sacred and um, alive. Like, and whenever the, a natural disaster will happen, they will see, they will think that it was uh, a punishment from the gods. And that led to worshiping and uh, all kinds of rituals. And right now with our technology, we have lost that sense of nature. And but why we're, is that? Um, I think technology and we're, I don't know, a lot of people in their everyday, they're never exposed to nature. It's just you go from your home, your car, and you go to work. So you're always sheltered. And um, it wasn't like that before. Well, it's funny because, I mean, I know a lot about earthquakes and I know a lot about uh, tornadoes and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, knowing about them is different than experiencing them, you know? Um, so, like, what am I missing? Because I know about them. What, what, what am I, what do I not get about this idea of the sublime that I'm missing? Um, well, I'm from Chile and I grew up with a constant reminder that there's going to be a big one coming, a big earthquake. So you, I grew up with that anticipation of there's always like some sort of disaster that's coming. Yeah. That like a tsunami or an earthquake or I don't know, there was a flooding and all sort of that. I think I that's such a question. No, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, the anticipation, I think, is a uh, uh, an important thing to think about because we may know about it, but we don't necessarily expect it. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas you did. Yeah. You know, I think there's certain certain parts of the world that people are. I don't know. They live with that kind of sense every day. Like you, like in in your unconscious, I guess you're kind of. I don't know. Living in a precarious um, landscape, I guess that's the title of my my piece. I guess. Do you think that the people who uh, live in those precarious landscapes and are sort of anticipating it are closer to people who used to exist and were sort of creating those rituals and understood that there was a very fragile connection between nature and humans? I think, uh, in a sense. It is a reminder, but then with with time you kind of forget, so the memories kind of fade away. But then whenever you get a, like a reminder of it, like uh, for instance, growing up in Chile, whenever there I experienced a really big earthquake, 2010. So whenever we feel that a little tremor, it's kind of like you rem remember what mm -hmm. how that was. So you forget, but then there's something that happens that kind of like brings you back. Six. Yeah, you know, uh, in your works, uh, in the gallery, you have these like long wooden poles. 
Um, and then you have these metal strips uh, mm -hmm. that are like sort of coming out of them. Um, how do those like, how does that natural material and that sort of synthetic material, well, it's not really synthetic, but it's sort of created, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, how does that, how do those two things combine? And like, do those two things have a meaning? Um, on my artifact, I was thinking, uh, I guess, relating it back to my to my site. You have uh, like two imposing uh, elements. You have uh, the hill and then the ocean, the mm -hmm. earth and the ocean. And uh, there's like a tension between them. Um, and I just building on my artifact, I was just trying to embody that mm -hmm. tension. So they're kind of pulling away, but then they're, I don't know, there's a point where they're, it's a lot of tension and compression or like, yeah, you know, pulling away from each other. Yeah, and uh, um, you can you can understand that with the sound of it as you're moving it around, but you can also like uh, think of uh, um, uh, like poles, like uh, uh, like electric poles, like breaking and things like that. You know, like when something happens, you know, like there's this really precarious sort of like feeling, you know, like when you're moving it around, like you may damage something. Mm -hmm. um, but you have this like very natural wood that you feel like very solid and very in control of. Um, so um, one thing that happens with your piece is that um, people go through this experience where they're supposed to drop it. And as they're dropping it, they feel like they're in control. Um, and then it gets to a point when you get, um, the thing starts to waver and then you, you drop it. Uh, can you talk about that feeling that people have when they? Um, so the way I arranged my artifact, it was, as you approach it, uh, it would look like a static sculptures, maybe relating to the way that we see nature as something that, you know, you can really to look at mm -hmm. and uh, as part of the ritual uh, participants will be invited to grab a hold of the handle and uh, in that way that would be an extension because once you grab it then the metal wires um, becomes become to tremble um, so it, it changes your perception as something static to something that's active just by touching it and and then um, Blowing into the ground, uh, meaning in a ritual, how, what that means. I mean, you people perform rituals or in ancient times, you know, in a way to um, regain a balance or become whole again. So, like in Chile, the the ancient people um, they will perform sacrifices or kind of offerings to the gods. Mm -hmm. So it would be the act of grounding, um, lowering it, it's, would be to ground yourself and then you um, then you realize that you can't really control it, so you have to just let it go and um, it, in a way it's a realization of something that you can't, I don't know, there are things that you can't control and you just have to like hmm. accept. Yeah, that, that seems sort of counterintuitive uh, for a ritual because you would think that you'd feel better at the end of a ritual, but you don't. You feel <laughs> <laughs> you feel humbled. You yeah, know? yeah. I guess in, in a way that's yeah, that's the point. Like we feel that we're so powerful, but um, whenever we experience something that makes you makes you feel smaller or that you don't really have that much power, it kind of brings you back to your essence. Or yeah, it's like humbling. Yeah. yeah. But just yeah. like to go beyond the trauma, you know, like, and to go beyond the humbling, uh, to still stay in that town in uh, Chile, you know, is like, what does that mean? You know, like about us? I think uh, once you experience, I mean, the sublime experience, like um, traumatic events, in a way, uh, it builds resilience. So a lot of people ask, like, why do they people like outsiders, it's like, why do, don't they move? Like they know that there's gonna be another hurricane, there's gonna be another earthquake. But yeah, it's, um, the place kind of becomes part of yourself. Um, and it's, I don't know, it, there's that attachment, I guess, mm -hmm. with memories and it's kind of like your home or your possessions are kind of, you develop a deep attachment 
and but in a way yeah there there's that resilience that builds yeah up with that yeah well at the end of our uh, interview we'd like to ask a couple of questions about your uh, creative practice so is there a time of day that you feel like you're uh, most creative uh after 10 p.m i think okay yeah all right. Uh, and do you listen to music or anything like that when you're making work? Um, yeah, I listen to music all the time, but uh, depending on the work. So if it's creative, it's usually, yeah, instrumentals. Okay. Yeah, no lyrics. Uh, is there anything that you're reading right now? Um, yeah, I guess I picked up a book a couple of weeks ago, um, The Open Road, I think it's called. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then I guess my last question for you would be, uh, what's next? On my project? Or in your life? life? Um, I'm not sure yet. Okay. <laughs> right now it's just focusing on finishing thesis and translating um, all these ideas into the architecture. So. Okay, perfect. So. <laughs> well, thank you so very much for joining us. And I'd like to uh, thank you all for your time and your interest in the professional practice and the creative explorations happening here at North Dakota State University. So for everyone here at the Memorial Union Gallery, keep creative. Mm -hmm.